Welcome back to another Home Cooking Hacks, where we will teach you how to do great things in the kitchen without a lot of gizmos and gadgets. And today we're gonna to do another base recipe. This is the flour tortilla that I use. And yes, if you've seen the taco recipe that I have, you have already have seen this. But I've been doing a little bit more on this recipe, and I wanna talk a little bit more about what I've, I'm doing with it now. First concept is, hey, many of us are trying to reduce our carbohydrates. And so I was looking into, did we really need to use the amount that we've had in this recipe before? And the answer was no, I actually was able to cut it back. But what we're going to do is I'm going to still use the same recipe. We're just going to divide it a little bit down into smaller portions. So I wanted to do like a one third instead of a one half cup flour base because that actually is hey, cutting your carbohydrates back that much is actually pretty good. So what we're going to do is show you how you can do the, the dry prep first and get all of that set, and then you can do your wet prep as soon as you're ready. So if you have a bunch of this already set up and staged, it's a matter of grabbing the, your little container, just grab your container with your mixture off, add it to a bowl, add water, stir, flatten, heat. You can actually make this guy in like less than two minutes once everything is all staged. And even the staging of it is really only about another two or three minutes. Oh, of course our video is gonna be a little bit longer so that we can go through step for step how to actually pull this off. So with that, what do we need as far as our kitchen equipment first? You're going to need a powder mixing bowl. So the powder ones, of course, made of metal are a lot easier for mixing powders. They don't stick to the sides and things like that. So you're gonna want a metal mixing bowl. You want some measuring cups? I'm gonna use a one half. We need a one cup total, so you can use a one cup if you want. I'm just gonna use a one half and do that twice. And then you're gonna need some, some other uh, smaller measuring spoons. Make sure that for your tablespoon, you definitely have a solid rigid metal one. We're also gonna need a quarter, um, a quarter teaspoon as well. I use a butter knife for flattening, stirring out. Don't forget your rolling pin. Uh, make sure you have a good rolling pin. Of course, I have a, a nice wooden one here. It's better than the old Teflon ones. And you're gonna need a very flat bottom pan. This one's a 12-incher, so that you can actually put your whole thing around the whole outside and get a nice even cook. And then since we're doing prep cooking, I'm just gonna use some little containers. These are one half little Tupperware containers. We're gonna fill these guys up with our unused portion for today. So that's all of the equipment that we need. All right, so our ingredient list is very simple. We need some flour, of course, for flour tortillas. I bet nobody saw that one coming. We are gonna need some coconut oil as a, our oil base. You can substitute other oils, just make sure that if you're using other oils that uh, they, that may decrease the shelf life of this, uh, this mixture. We also need some salt, baking powder, and some water. Okay, and now on to our actual creation. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by putting one cup of flour into our bowl. So I'm just gonna remember using my butter knife here, just flatten everything out here. Now this is gonna make three slightly smaller tortillas, or if you still like the large ones, you can do two tortillas out of this. It can do six or six to eight taco shells, depending on the size of those that you want. So one cup of flour is all we need from there. Now as far as our salt, we are going to do a quarter teaspoon of salt. So quarter teaspoon of salt, and we want half a teaspoon of baking powder. Now if you have an extra half teaspoon, you can use that. I'm just gonna use the quarter twice because I, I passed my uh, math fractions. And now I'm going to mix the powder together with the knife here. Okay, once we have the powder nice and mixed together, next step is to play in our food. We're going to mix one tablespoon of coconut oil. So this can be a little bit more, a little bit less, so I'm not going to kill myself to get it exact, but I'm gonna get as close to one tablespoon as I can. So that's pretty good there. Now, again, the coconut oil is what's gonna give us a longer shelf life, so if you're not using it all right away, then um, go ahead and use uh, anything else if you want. You could substitute, possibly, probably do olive oil. I know I've done butter before. 
Um, I've tried a few different oils in the absence of coconut oil. I just found coconut oil definitely is the best. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we've cut in just the, that one tablespoon. Now what we need to do is mix this by hand until it is all consistent. So you'll pick up big glops of the oil like this. We wanna make sure that we break up all those big glops, drop it back in, and just keep doing this until it's very smooth. So you're gonna feel the big glops of coconut oil. You're just gonna keep on mixing this together until no globs remain. So we'll go ahead and do this and we'll be back when we're done with that step. Okay, so I don't feel any more large clumps in here. So now what we're gonna do is I'm just going to get my three little containers and I'm gonna divvy these up. Now I only grabbed two lids because I plan on using one of these now. I just want three consistent size containers for the purpose of uh, making sure I'm measuring. So I'm just going to go one tablespoon at a time until each container has an approximate equal amount. Okay, so these guys are all now evened out. So three equal containers. I'm gonna put lids on two of them and now these guys can be set aside and uh, I'll go ahead and use these another day. Now, with the one that's remaining, I'm just gonna throw it right back in, into there. And then next phase is we're gonna add some water. Now, when you are doing your water mixture with this, um, as I found is that you make more of these, so if you were to be making this whole amount, I might actually only add five tablespoons of water to do the half cup one, so half of what we just made, I found three tablespoons of water to do one third. I've actually found about a tablespoon and two teaspoons is good. So uh, it does peter off in the water. So the more of it you make, you're gonna do a little bit less water. So if you're unsure, undershoot your water because it's way easier to add more water in than it is to fix it if you have too much water. Of course, if you do have too much water, just fix it by adding a little bit more flour. So let's see how that gets us. So we just added one teaspoon, excuse me, uh, one tablespoon and two teaspoons. And now we're gonna start mixing it with the knife. And then when it's pretty thoroughly mixed with the knife, then we'll go in and mix it up by hand. So this one does look a little powdery. So we could probably do, you can see it's, consistent there and we can probably add a little bit more water but I'm gonna see if I can go without and it's gonna to be too dry so let's go ahead and just add a touch more water I don't want to overshoot it so I'm just gonna do like maybe half a teaspoon more Okay, so I'm just gonna invert that back into the side there. And then now it's starting to pick up the rest of it. Ideally, what we should see is that our, our uh, dish down here should almost look clean. We should be able to pick up the rest of what's in here as far as our flour mixture. Okay, so we've cleaned out our bowl. Our flour mixture is over here now. Now we're gonna knead it, and it's gonna need kneaded for about, I'd say, two or three minutes you're gonna knead it until it's very smooth. So I'm gonna roll it and then cross roll it and just keep cross rolling it like this till we get it very consistently smooth. If it's still feeling a little bit too dry, then you don't wanna add water directly to this, but you could wet your hand with a little bit of water and then just roll it over there. It'll pick up just a little bit of the water from your hands. In this case though, I really don't need to do that. It is uh, mixing together nicely. You can see how it's getting smooth. That's what we want. We want it to get smooth. And we want it to get to the point where all that's gonna happen is every time I fold it on top of itself, it's gonna look as though you haven't even folded it on top of itself. Much like that. So we got the perfect ratio here. So our final step then is going to be to roll it out. So I'm gonna to wanna to clean off the counter a little bit from there. 
Now I have one about a flower mixed up here. That's okay. I don't need to worry about that. I just want to get all of the other stuff off the counter here because I'm going to use most of it. Okay, so I kept out the flour because we just want to sprinkle just a little bit of flour on the counter there. That should be perfectly fine. And now we're going to just dip the one side into the other. Now, the hardest challenge, the thing you're going to have to work the most at getting is to get this guy to be fairly spherical. So we're going to do that by going at about 90 degree angles and then cut it in about 30s until it gets pretty consistent. So we're rolling it down until it's, I'd say, a little bit uh, thinner than about an eighth or so of an inch. When you get to a good stopping point, go ahead and flip her over. Remember, this is going to be like a single wrap tortilla shell that we're going to do for either a burrito wrap or a chicken wrap or something like that. And that's actually looking pretty sweet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to head on over to the oven and we will turn that on and we'll start working on cooking this guy up. So we're over onto the oven. I'm going to turn off the heat. We're going to start with it a little bit higher. And then we're going to throw this pan in here, uh, throw this guy right in here. And then what we're going to be looking for is the top of this is going to get a little bit bubbly, we're going to see. And then as this guy gets bubbly, then we can flip it around. If you get fancy with it, then you can flip it with one little hit there, or you can grab some type of cooking utensil or usually just slide it up. Now what we'll notice right now is it's still cooking and I shake this, it kind of sticks to the bottom. One of the ways you can tell it's ready to flip is when you take this guy, shake it, and it moves in the pan. That means it's ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and let this guy go. Okay, so here you can kind of see how it's kind of getting a little bubbly. So we're we'll gonna do the chest. You can see how wiggly it is in the pan. Let me zoom this guy back out. So now we just need to flip it. Best thing to do is just a little flip like that. It takes a little bit of practice, but you'll be good. Now once this is done, I'll turn off the heat and just kind of let that sit for a little bit longer and then set that right on a plate and it's ready to go. All right, so we're all set. So this guy looks pretty good either way. You can kind of see it's nice and flimsy still. It's got some flexibility, so it's gonna grab it off her, set it on a plate, and now we can use it for whatever, whether we wanna wrap a burrito or do a chicken wrap or whatever else we wanna do. Now we have a nice flour tortilla. All right, so there is our flour tortilla. Now we've made enough that we can do three whole wraps. I can turn this guy right here and do a nice taco or a chicken wrap or anything else I want to do. And I think today it's going to be a buffalo chicken wrap that we'll do a video on that pretty soon. So this guy here is a very nice and easy recipe. You can prep up and make, you know, a week's worth of these guys all in one setting. Set them all aside in those little containers, pour one in, stir it up, mix, spread, and you're all set to go. Again, you can take that same amount that we did, split that into six little balls and make six little soft taco shells. You can do a larger burrito shell by using half of what we did, or in this case, I'm doing a little bit smaller of one using only one third of what we made. So with that, I hope that this video helped you how to get your cooking done in the kitchen. Have a look at the website at homecookinghacks.com if you want to download a copy of the recipe and uh, refer to the video for more guidance.